So you're in high school physics class, and your teacher asks the class, okay, everyone, what is the formula for momentum? And you, being an eager young physics student, raise your hand and proudly tell your teacher that momentum equals mass times velocity. And your teacher says, great job, that is exactly right, momentum equals mass times velocity. And the whole class claps and cheers for you because you got the answer right. And you go up to the front of the class and your teacher gives you a gold star for being such a good physics student. And that night you go home and your parents are there and they say, we heard you got an answer right in physics class today. And so we decided to celebrate your birthday six months early. And then they give you an Xbox. And so you stand proudly with your Xbox in one hand and a copy of A Brief History of Time by Stephen Hawking in the other. And you tell yourself that this is the best day of your life. So you graduate high school with amazing grades, and then the day finally comes when you go to university to study physics. And you're really excited because you are going to become a scientist. You show up to your mechanics class, and the professor asks, what is the formula for momentum? And you tell your professor, momentum equals mass times velocity. And then your professor gives you an angry look, and she says, you complete idiot. This isn't some physics class for dumb babies. We are studying rotational mechanics, and in rotational mechanics, an object's momentum is defined using the inertia tensor, which is a symmetric 3x3 matrix that you can calculate by doing integrals over the mass distribution. And the whole class of 300 people laugh at you for getting the answer wrong and for being a dumb idiot. And you ask yourself if you are really meant to be a physics student after all. Maybe you are too much of a dumb idiot to study physics. You go home that night and desperately search the internet to figure out what the inertia tensor is, but you just get lost in a maze of Wikipedia articles and feel more confused than when you started. You remember that day when your high school teacher told you that you were right for saying that momentum equals mass times velocity, and you wonder why your high school physics teacher lied to you and why they didn't tell you about the inertia tensor. The next day you show up at your relativity class and your professor is Albert Einstein. And Einstein tells you that momentum is a four-dimensional vector that lives in four-dimensional space-time. And you tell Einstein that you thought momentum was calculated with the 3x3 three three symmetric inertia tensor. And Einstein is like, well, technically, rotational angular momentum is a four-dimensional bivector, but that's outside the scope of this course. Later, you go to your advanced mechanics class, and your professor tells you that generalized momentum conjugate to position is defined as the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to q dot. And in Hamiltonian mechanics, momentum is just a coordinate in the phase space on a symplectic manifold. And then you go to your quantum physics class, and the professor says that momentum measurements are always probabilistic, and the way to get the expected value of momentum is to operate on the wave function with the momentum operator, which has the square root of negative 1 in it for some reason, and then do an integral over all possible outcomes. And also the momentum wave function might be the Fourier transform of the position wave function, but he can't be sure since everything is just probabilities. At this point, you've completely given up trying to understand what momentum is. You've stopped going to classes, and you've stopped doing your homework because life is pointless and physics will never make sense no matter how hard you try. You remember back to the greatest day of your life when your high school physics teacher gave you a gold star, and you remember now that your teacher had this tired look in her eye, a quiet sadness that you couldn't explain, and that's when you realize she knew. She knew that momentum wasn't equal to mass times velocity because she had gone to university to study physics just like you, and she lied to you to protect you from the truth because she didn't want you to deal with the pain of never knowing what momentum is because it's too complicated. And you realize that students all over the world are in high school right now being lied to, being told that momentum is mass times velocity, and they too will go to university and learn the truth and suffer just like you did. And you clench your fists in anger, you realize that the eternal cycle of folly needs to be stopped, and it's time to destroy momentum once and for all. So you go to Switzerland and dig a tunnel to the Large Hadron Collider, and you're about to push the secret button on the Large Hadron Collider that will destroy the universe. But then the Avengers show up to stop you, and Captain America tells you that he understands how you feel, and that we've all been there. We've all been confused in physics class, and think that we're dumb, but the way to deal with pain isn't to destroy the universe. Instead, we should help others and use our life experience to make the world less painful for future generations. And Iron Man says he wants shawarma. Anyway, the Avengers beat you up, and the police arrest you, and when you're in court, the judge sentences you to life in prison for trying to destroy the universe, which is the worst possible crime. So you're sentenced to life in a frictionless vacuum, eternally bouncing off the walls of your cell in perfectly elastic collisions.
and all you can think about is whether you should calculate your momentum with an inertia tensor or a Lagrangian or a wave function, and you will never know the answer.